Hey amazing parent, it's Dr. Lindsay here with this week's psychology-based parenting tips, which are focused on minimizing sibling fighting. So in honor of National Sibling Day this week, we're focusing on this hot topic for all parents with more than one child, how to prevent and manage sibling fighting. The push and pull, the laughter and tears, the sibling dynamic is a complex dance that parents navigate daily. While sibling rivalry is as old as time, the ways in which we address and manage these conflicts can have lasting impacts on our children's relationships with each other and their overall emotional development. In this episode, I'll share my top 10 tips for preventing and managing sibling fighting, drawing from both time-tested methods and innovative strategies that go beyond the usual advice. Plus, don't miss out on my free downloadable resource, five must-have tips for better behavior today, packed with actionable tips for improving your child's overall behavior immediately. You can download your copy today at parentingwithpsychology.com slash better. I'll pop that link in the description below this video for you. Number one, establish a family mantra emphasizing sibling bonds. So creating a family mantra that emphasizes the importance of sibling bonds sets a foundational value system within the family. This mantra should be simple, memorable, and reflect the core values you wish to instill regarding sibling relationships. For example, in our family, we lift each other up, not only promotes unity, but also subtly discourages negative behaviors like putting each other down. Or you may choose something like, family is the gift of lifelong friends. Regularly recite your version of the mantra during family gatherings, and especially remind your children of it during conflicts. This repetition helps to internalize the values of the sibling relationship and serves as a constant reminder of the family's collective identity and shared values. If you'd like to learn more about creating a family mantra, I'll link to more episodes about family mantras in the description below this video. Number two, model effective conflict resolution. One of the most powerful tools preventing sibling fights is for parents to model effective conflict resolution themselves. Children are keen observers and often mimic the behavior of adults around them. By handling your own disagreements in a calm, respectful, and constructive manner, you're teaching your children valuable lessons in communication and problem solving. Demonstrate how to listen actively, express feelings without assigning blame, and work together to find a solution. This not only teaches them how to navigate their own conflicts, but also reinforces the importance of empathy and understanding in maintaining healthy relationships. Remember, every interaction is an opportunity to model the behaviors you wish to see in your children, making your own conflict resolution practices a powerful teaching tool in preventing sibling fights. Number three, encourage teamwork through shared goals. Fostering a sense of teamwork can transform sibling rivalry into cooperation. Create opportunities for your children to work together towards a common goal. This could be a joint project like building a Lego castle or a team effort like preparing a family meal. Celebrate their successes as a team, emphasizing the value of working together. This shared sense of achievement can strengthen their bond and teach valuable collaborative skills. This might also mean fostering shared interests. For example, two of my boys often butt heads, but sometimes they find a video game that they both enjoy and can happily play that game together, as well as engage in stimulating discussions about the game. We occasionally allow them extra screen time to play that game together to capitalize on the opportunity for them to connect over a shared experience. Number four, individual time with each parent. Ensuring each child receives individual attention from each parent can significantly reduce rivalry. Perhaps that means scheduling regular one-on-one -on -one outings or activities with each child, allowing them to feel special and heard. This dedicated time helps mitigate competition for parental attention as each child knows that they'll have their own time to shine. It also strengthens the parent-child bond, providing a safe space for children to express feelings that they may not share in a group setting. If your family schedule does not allow for solo outings, or you prefer family time to be spent as a group, identify special one-on-one -on -one time you can do with each child at home. Perhaps it's reading a story with your youngest child in the morning on the weekend, taking the time to braid your daughter's hair before her gymnastics class, or texting funny memes back and forth with your oldest child. Sneaking in these shared moments throughout the week can help each child feel loved and special. Number five, celebrate individual achievements and differences. 
The way that parents talk about their kids can have a huge impact on how siblings get along with each other. Never negatively compare one sibling to another or speak poorly about one sibling in front of the other. Instead, recognize and celebrate each child's unique achievements and qualities to foster a sense of individual worth that isn't based on competition or comparison. Make an effort to highlight each child's strengths, interests, and accomplishments, showing that you value them for who they are. This helps to reduce competition and encourages siblings to appreciate and even admire each other's differences. Number six, create a calm down space. So a designated calm down space in your home can be a sanctuary for children to manage their emotions independently. Equip this space with calming tools like stress balls, coloring books, soft music, or sensory toys. Encourage your children to use this space when they're feeling overwhelmed by emotions, teaching them healthy coping mechanisms for anger and frustration. This can help to get ahead of the emotional turmoil before it causes fighting between siblings. Number seven, acknowledge and amends technique. My acknowledge and amends technique is a powerful tool for teaching children how to navigate conflicts constructively. When a disagreement arises, guide each child through the process of acknowledging their feelings and actions. This involves each child expressing what upset them and identifying their own role in the conflict without placing blame. Following this, they brainstorm ways to begin to make amends with each other. This could be through apologies, helping to fix a problem, or giving a hug. This technique not only teaches accountability and conflict resolution skills, but also empathy, as children learn to see things from their siblings' perspective. You can learn more about the Acknowledge and Amends technique in the video linked in the description below. Number eight, monitor and guide digital interactions. In the digital age, sibling conflict can extend into online spaces. It's crucial to monitor their interactions on social media, gaming platforms, and other digital mediums. Teach your children about respectful digital communication and set clear rules about online behavior. Address any instances of sibling cyberbullying immediately, emphasizing the importance of kindness and respect even in digital interactions. Number nine, family meetings for open discussion. Regular family meetings provide a forum for open discussion, allowing each family member, regardless of age, to voice their grievances and contribute to solutions. This democratic approach gives children a sense of agency and shows that their opinions are valued. Use these meetings to discuss any issues, brainstorm solutions, and even set family goals. This practice not only helps resolve conflicts, but also strengthens the family unit by fostering an environment of open communication and mutual respect. Head to parentingwithpsychology.com slash meeting to snag my free guide, how to hold a successful family meeting. And number 10, provide leeway for sibling-led resolutions. Managing sibling fighting effectively often requires parents to cultivate patience and understanding that these quarrels are a normal part of children's development. As children navigate the complexities of communicating with their peers and resolving disagreements, sibling conflicts serve as an invaluable learning opportunity. It's natural for parents to want to intervene at the first sign of conflict, but giving siblings space to work through their disagreements can be incredibly beneficial. This approach allows them to develop crucial skills such as negotiation, compromise, and empathy. Of course, it's important to monitor the situation to ensure it remains respectful and to step in if necessary. However, by adopting a patient and understanding stance, parents can help their children learn how to resolve conflicts on their own, fostering a healthier, more autonomous approach to problem solving in their interpersonal relationships. I'd love to hear from you in the comments what other strategies you use in your household to help manage sibling fighting. Okay, it's time for the take home message for this episode. Managing sibling fighting is an ongoing process that requires patience, consistency, and creativity. By implementing these strategies, you're not just minimizing conflicts, you're laying the foundation for lifelong sibling bonds built on respect, understanding, and love. Remember, the goal is not to eliminate all fighting, but to teach your children how to navigate their differences positively. Which of these strategies can you start implementing with your family to promote stronger sibling bonds this week? 
managing sibling quarrels falls under the check yourself category of my five C's parenting framework. If you're new to the five C's, look in the description below this video to find more parenting resources, including a video about the five C's parenting framework and a link to sign up for my weekly newsletter to be sure that you never miss any of my new tips. Okay, amazing parent, that wraps up today's episode. Thanks for joining me to fill your parenting toolbox with psychology-based tools to feel more confident and capable in your parenting. If you found this video helpful, I'd invite you to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Parenting with Psychology tips. Join me next week to learn how to stop losing your cool and yelling at your kids. In the meantime, check out my free resources listed below in the description and keep up the good work on your amazing parenting journey. Oh, and don't forget to download that free resource, five must-have tips for better behavior today at parentingwithpsychology.com slash better for more actionable strategies to improve your children's behavior and foster a more harmonious family life.